Hey folks! Welcome back to Military Forces Unleashed, where we break down the world's deadliest military tech with a dose of reality and a sprinkle of sarcasm. Today we're diving into something colossal, sleek, and terrifying, if you're on the wrong end of it, South Korea's Sejong the Great Class Destroyers, also known as the KDX-3. If you think the name sounds grandiose, wait until you hear what these bad boys can do. They're not just floating fortresses, they're more like missile-laden supercomputers with attitude. In this episode, we'll explore how these giants stack up in the big leagues, their cutting-edge tech, and the sheer firepower they bring to the table. Ready to jump in? Let's go! First, a little backstory. The Sejong the Great class destroyers are named after, you guessed it, Sejong the Great, one of Korea's most revered monarchs. Sejong wasn't just a king. He was a visionary, famous for creating the Korean alphabet and championing technological innovation. Fitting name, right? These ships are South Korea's answer to the Aegis-equipped destroyers dominating modern navies, particularly the U.S. Navy's Arleigh Burke class. Launched in the mid-2000s, the KDX-3 program was South Korea's way of saying, we're here and we're serious. Built by Hyundai Heavy Industries and Daewoo Shipbuilding, these destroyers were designed to protect not just the Korean peninsula, but also to project power far beyond its shores. Fun fact, they're among the largest destroyers in the world, stretching over 165 meters. Yeah, these things are practically floating cities. Let's talk specs. The Sejong the Great Class Destroyers boast a hefty arsenal, starting with the Aegis Combat System. This tech allows them to track and engage multiple targets simultaneously, whether it's aircraft, missiles, or even those annoying speedboats pirates seem to love. It's like playing a video game on God Mode. Then there's the Firepower, 128 Vertical Launch System, VLS Cells. For comparison, that's more than even the U.S. Navy's Arleigh Burke destroyers. These cells can launch a mix of anti-air, anti-ship, and land attack missiles. Think SM-2, SM-3, and the Hyunmu-3 cruise missiles. Oh, and they've got a phalanx CIWS for close-in defense because sometimes you need a literal Gatling gun to swat incoming threats. The propulsion system? It's a combined gas turbine and gas COGAG setup, giving these ships a top speed of around 30 knots. Not the fastest out there, but when you're carrying enough ordnance to flatten a small country, speed isn't everything. One of the standout features is the SPY-1D radar, a key component of the Aegis system. This radar can detect and track hundreds of targets simultaneously, making it a nightmare for anyone trying to sneak up. It's like having eyes in the back of your head, if your head was a 10,000-ton warship. Another cool innovation is the integration of the Korean Vertical Launching System, KVLS, which allows for more flexibility in missile loadout. Want to swap out some surface-to-air missiles for land attack ones? No problem. Culturally, these ships have become a point of pride in South Korea, often featured in military parades and promotional videos. They're a symbol of technological prowess and a reminder that South Korea isn't just about K-pop and kimchi. Now let's get real. Are these ships impressive? Absolutely. But they're not without flaws. For one, maintenance is a logistical headache. Keeping the Aegis system and all those missiles in top shape requires serious cash and manpower. Think of it like owning a Ferrari. Cool, but expensive as hell to maintain. Then there's the cost. Each ship runs upwards of $1 billion. That's a lot of one, even for a country with a robust economy. Critics argue that for the price, South Korea could invest in more submarines or frigates, spreading out their naval capabilities. And let's not forget the geopolitical risks. These ships are a clear signal to North Korea and, by extension, China. While that's the point, it also makes them high-priority targets in any conflict. 
being the biggest kid on the block has its downsides. So, where do the Sejong the Great Class Destroyers fit in the grand scheme of things? They're a statement, loud, clear, and not to be ignored. South Korea is showing the world it's not just playing defense, it's ready to project power and protect its interests far beyond its shores. If you're a fan of military hardware, or just like big ships with bigger guns, you've got to appreciate what these destroyers bring to the table. They're not perfect, but they don't need to be. They just need to remind everyone that South Korea means business. Before we wrap up, I want to hear from you. What do you think about these floating fortresses? Are they worth the hype? Or just another expensive toy in the naval playground? Drop your thoughts in the comments. And hey, if you enjoyed this breakdown, hit that like button, subscribe for more, and share it with your fellow military enthusiasts. Your support helps keep this channel running and lets us keep diving into the world's most fascinating military tech. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, stay sharp and stay safe.